Hello gardeners, I'm Joe Gadbois at Greenland Garden Center. I'm one of the managers here, I actually run the perennials department and today uh, we're going to look at repotting tropicals. So uh, a lot of people are kind of nervous when it comes to repotting tropicals and it's something that they sort of dread doing but it's actually a skill that is really important to learn. Uh, tropicals need to be repotted routinely about every three to five years as a minimum. Uh, and the reason for that is often not what you might think. So a lot of people like to repot their tropicals into as large a pot as possible to try to save themselves time. And actually what that does is um, you end up sort of rotting out the roots because you have too much soil in the pot for those roots to be able to absorb the moisture. Now, before we actually start repotting, I'd like to show you the kind of potting mix that we're going to use. So it's really, really important to choose an actual potting soil, a nice porous potting soil. These usually consist of basically peat and perlite. So we're not using field soil here. We're not using soil that you would use for outdoor plants out in the garden. We're actually using a sterile potting soil. Usually you can find these at garden centers in the soil section bagged. It'll say potting soil on it. Ideally look for one that is specifically designed for tropical plants. Usually for about say a uh, 8 to 10 liter bag you're looking at about $9 or so for that. Um, so this is what you want to use, very important. Now the best time of year to repot is really spring but uh, you can do it in the fall, you can do it in the winter if you need to. If you're starting to have issues with your plant, you're noticing you know a lot of kind of um, say your leaves are wilting even though the plant is moist a lot of the time that's from overwatering, and it's easier to overwater if you have decomposing potting soil and you need to actually repot so if you've had a plant for 10 years and it's done well suddenly it's going downhill it's never been repotted oftentimes if you repot that plant's going to start coming right back for you so when we actually repot um, Basically to start with, obviously we have to remove the plant from the pot. What I tend to do is I'll give it a few good taps on the edge. I'll squeeze it if it's a plastic pot, right? And then tap on the bottom, comes right out most of the time. Now as far as the choice of pot, again, I've gone one size bigger. This is a plastic pot with drainage holes. Um, I really recommend using a pot that actually does have drainage holes so that when you're watering the excess moisture can drain through and the roots don't rot out. If you want to use a ceramic pot or a clay pot that's fine too. Keep in mind with clay pots they do absorb the excess moisture from the soil. So uh, for plants that like to stay moist like say a peace lily not always the best choice. A little bit better for things like cacti and succulents. Um, if your pot doesn't have drainage holes, then we'll start by adding drainage material to the bottom of the pot. So something like charcoal or perlite or lava rock. And usually a couple inches goes in the bottom of the pot. If it's a tall pot, you need more. In this case, because we have drainage holes, that's not necessary. So I'm just going to start by actually ruffling up the root mass a little bit. Now when people see me do this, they're often shocked at how rough I am. But if you have a healthy plant like this with a healthy root system, this won't do the plant any harm. In fact, this is what you want to do. You want to loosen the roots the same as if you're planting it out in the garden um, so that they can actually grow out into the surrounding soil in the new pot. Um, if you have plants like say bird of paradise that like to stay root bound, you can always just take the plant out of the pot and not really do too much of this and just put it into a very slightly larger pot and, uh, and then it will be fine. But here I'm just loosening it up. So I like to use my fingertips for this. If you have a really hard solid root mass, sometimes you need to use like say a hand claw or even a knife to cut the roots apart. Here it's been quite easy to separate them. When you start repotting, you want to water your plant first. So you want to make sure the root system is moist beforehand. And what I also like to do, this is a perfect opportunity when you're repotting to remove any foliage that has kind of gotten damaged or is dying back. So take just a pair of, of uh, cutters like this good idea to sterilize them first, okay, because you don't want to spread diseases, things like viruses between plants. Just a mild bleach solution works fine. 
and I'm going to remove some of these damaged and yellowing leaves um, because they don't really do too much for the plant anyway. And you know, this is something that I like to do on a regular basis anyway, but hey, if you don't have a lot of time to be coddling your plants, then when you repot is a good time to get caught up on that perfect opportunity to keep or to, um, to clean up the plant a little bit. Um, always remember with any type of plant, but really with house plants in particular, that good hygiene um, in terms of keeping all of the dead growth off of the plant, keeping it nice and clean, replenishing your soil every few years. Um, that is really the key to avoiding disease and insect problems, okay? So with that done, I'm gonna start by putting some soil into the pot. I want the top of the soil line to be maybe a half inch below the top of the pot so that when I water, the water doesn't spill all over the place. So I've got it positioned here. This is where the soil is going to end up. Plant is centered. Now I'm going to actually start to backfill with my soil. So all the way around, I start to add my soil. And I'm just gonna take my fingertips and just kind of shove them right in there so that I can get all of the soil worked in around the roots, all the way around. And my goal is to remove any air pockets that we have in there. So I'm not doing it super, super tightly. I'm going to give the pot a couple taps as I go to just to allow the soil to settle. But you don't want to be ramming it in there so that it's hard like cement. We just want to make sure that the soil settles in nicely and we don't have huge air pockets in there. And keeping the plant upright as I do this and centered in the pot just filling it in all the way around. And again, tapping. I find that tapping really helps. Tap multiple times as you go along because again, it just helps to get the soil settled. And what I'm looking for when I'm done is actually for a soil surface that is going to end up being quite level. We don't wanna have lots of divot, um, rather divots. We don't wanna have lots of divots in the surface of the soil because if you have that the soil tends to not dry out as evenly as you would like it and once you've got it basically to the top i give it a couple final little presses final taps and there you go so it's repotted and then obviously after you've finished repotting give it a good watering as well and then a final thing is, if desired, you can use a root booster type fertilizer, such as 105210. This can be applied about on a weekly basis for three to four weeks after repotting to stimulate new root growth. And uh, very easy to apply, just mix it with water and water the plant with it. And that's it, you're done. So not as hard as you thought. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I would encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out more videos on gardening and lifestyle. And for sure, check out our website at greenlandgarden.com and like us on Facebook for more on gardening in the prairies. For Greenland Garden Centre, I'm Joe Gadbois.